Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. I am going to be talking about the source of money today. I feel like this is a really foundational concept that I I want to shout this from the rooftops, so I'm going to, and I'm just going to dedicate this episode to it because I once brought this up in my Instagram story during a Q&A, and I was flooded with messages from people saying, oh my God, I've never thought about it that way. This is so helpful. So I want to give it to you. Now, just a reminder, Money Magic, the next module is happening tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Yes, 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 yes. So if you would like to jump into the live energy, go ahead and do so. If you're hearing this before 2 p.m. Pacific time, I will see you then. And this module is going to be a good one. So I'm kind of declaring tomorrow's module like the pleasure module of money. And there have been a lot of things that I have been playing with over the past almost a year now where I've actually been able to allow myself to experience pleasure in the mystery of money. So not knowing where it's going to come from or when it's going to drop in or how things are going to unfold or how I'm going to reach my crazy, insane, unrealistic goals around money without really having clear answers or guidance as to how and when and who and all of that stuff. So tomorrow we're really going to be going into pleasure around money and making it more more like a game than ever, more fun than ever, allowing it to just be this thing that really expands you and allowing it to feel magical rather than miserable. Oh, the other thing that is happening in tomorrow's module is I have found other ways to navigate money without aiming at money head on. So sometimes people can get really confused and blocked around money by focusing directly on money. So I have discovered a few different avenues to make money without directly staring it in the face. And that has really been a game changer for me over the past year. And so I'm going to be sharing all of that in the module tomorrow. So I hope you can join. And I've decided that I'm going to be upping the price on April 1st. So if you want to get in, I would definitely get in before April 1st. All of the details will be in the description box. It's going to be epic. I cannot wait to have you inside. We're going to have a blast. All right, so let's discuss what the true source of money is. Now, remember, when I first brought this up in the resources episode, money is energetic. Money is energetic. Money is energetic. That is the premise that you want to start with in order to start moving some things around. If you can't get yourself behind the statement of money is energetic, the manifestation piece just is not going to click. So on top of money is energetic and money is a form of resources, it's a resource that we experience in this time and space reality that we're dealing with. One of the biggest things that I see people shoot themselves in the foot around is where money comes from. So generally speaking, the idea that money is energetic is something that a lot of people can actually get on board with really quickly. But then when I ask you, okay, money is energy, so where is it coming from? A lot of people will start pointing at things like employers, or stock markets, or finding a $20 bill on the street, so on and so forth. Instead of looking at the true source of where this money is actually coming from, they start pointing to these 3D external things that might dovetail with money, but are not truly the source of money. So the question that came up in my Instagram story when I was doing a Q&A Someone asked me about transitioning from being employed and having an employer who's giving you a steady paycheck to being self-employed and how to maintain your stability around money when that transition is happening. And the immediate response that I gave was that money comes from God, not your employer. 
And I would argue that this is always true. So the reason why people have a hard time with this is because it seems as though when someone is paying you, it is coming from somewhere. It's coming from someone. This is also one of the reasons why people get really tangled up in scarcity is they think it has more to do with other people than it does with their own energetics. Now, of course, after years and years and years of doing this, after years of teaching people to do this, what I can confidently say with knowing in my entire being is that money comes from one place and one place only, and that is what I call God. Now, let me add let me add something to this because I understand that a lot of people have a lot of hangups around God or the word God. So I want to clarify, if the word God doesn't work for you, that's totally fine. You can call it something like source, divine source, creator, the universe, whatever you want to call it, that's completely fine. I know that some people get a little bit too um, almost fearful about God because it kind of feels personified. Like when we say God, sometimes people will go into oh no, God's going to punish me or reward me. I promise you that's not what's happening. So if your initial reaction is I'm either going to be punished or rewarded based on my good or bad behavior, I promise you that is not real. That is not real. Those are programmed associations that you might be dancing with at the moment, but that's not actually how it works on an energetic level. So Toss that idea out of your mind. That is not a thing. That is not how this works. And I would just opt for a different word that feels more neutral. For me, God really is neutral, but it's also unconditional love in the sense that God does not condemn. So if you're getting hung up on, I'm either going to be rewarded or punished, Based on this, if my saying money comes from God, if that actually causes a disruption in your system, it's probably because you're perceiving it as this punishment reward system, which isn't a thing. I've said it in previous episodes of the podcast, there is no naughty or nice list. God is not Santa Claus. God is not a punishing parent. That's just not what's happening. So unless you have that really dialed in, then perhaps opt for language like the universe in order to soften it a bit. So that's just a recommendation that I wanted to throw out there. Now, one of the interesting experiences that I had in 2021 was I went through a lot of different launches. So I did a lot of different experiments. I tried different master classes, things that I liked running, things that different structures for different things. And I went through many, many, many launches. And the interesting thing about last year is that I bombed pretty much every single launch. Fail, 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 fail. Would not even come close to what I actually wanted to see happen in my launches. When I would put something into the world, I would fall short almost every single time. I think the best launch that I had in 2021 was actually Dom. And to this day, that is still one of my most popular classes that I've ever taught. Now, when I'm talking about that was my best launch, what I mean is it was very, very high in engagement. People were very excited about it. It was epic. I was in love with the branding. More people bought that class than anything else that I've ever put out in in one sitting, in one launch period. That was the highest traffic I'd ever had. However, however, that launch was not where the most money came through in 2021. Now, if money had anything to do with my successes or my failures or my projects or anything like that, if it had anything to do with other people or circumstances or whatever, I would be broke. The only logical thing that could come from failure after failure after failure after failure would be that I would not have money. If I had a strong correlation between 
my finances and my successes in a launch or whatever it is that I'm putting out, whatever project I'm working on, I would be fucked. If I bundled those two things together, game over. Now, I know I've said this a million and one times, but I'm going to say it again. Do not correlate money with anything else. Don't correlate it with people. Don't correlate it with employers. Don't correlate it with having a job or not having a job. Don't correlate it with clients. Don't correlate it with anything. Leave money in its own corner. Let it let it be its own thing that you're in a relationship with. Now, the good thing about this is that when you separate money and you isolate money and just let it be its own thing, then you start simply interacting with money and nothing else. So there's no more clutter around it, no more human gunk that you add into the mix when you just look at money as coming from God. That's it. That's what allowed me to bomb every single launch, which is that how I wanted it to go? No. Did a lot of lessons come out of it? Yes, absolutely. Would I want to do it again? No, absolutely not. But regardless, no matter how many failures I had in my personal perception of my my work, money was never affected. Money kept growing. Money kept finding me. Money kept flowing in. Money kept expanding. My finances grew no matter what was happening in my business. And I've designed it that way. And this is the best thing that comes from looking at money coming from God, coming from source, coming from that one origin place. So it can find you no matter what. It can come to you no matter what. If you add too much human clutter into the mix, if you add too many logistics to the whole money thing, you bog yourself down. You interrupt the flow of money. So what happens when you start looking at a divine source of money instead, it purifies the entire situation. So now it doesn't become an issue about the job or the employer or you starting a new business or anything of the sort. Now it's just a relationship between you and God or you and whatever source you like to interact with. But that simplifies this entire equation. So every time I, because I get a lot of these questions where people will talk about money or ask about money, and it's generally in the context of, here's this money situation that I want to improve, and then here's this human clutter piece that I'm tacking onto the money situation, and it's jacking everything up. So if you purify the source of money, that just cuts through the bullshit immediately. I've started making a joke for quite some time just with friends of mine where I say, no, 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 God pays my rent. God pays my rent. God's going to pay my tax bill. God is buying me groceries today. It's all God. And when I do that, it adds levity into the whole situation. It becomes way easier to relax. I can let it move through me a lot easier when I'm wanting to purchase something, when I'm wanting to do something. It completely takes the pressure off of wherever you're correlating your money maker or what generates you money or wherever money is flowing from. It completely takes the pressure off of that. Because doing something like putting pressure on a new business to generate money doesn't feel good. Then it kind of turns you off. Then the whole like business thing kind of get gets poisoned because there's too much pressure prematurely. Or if, you know, you want to sell some art pieces, but you're, you know, holding a gun to its head, metaphorically speaking, and you're spooking away buyers or you're preventing the flow of money to come to you just because you're putting everything in a pressure cooker or frantically, desperately trying to get a job and and stressing yourself out. Now, let, let me be clear. A lot of the time, getting a job is a very 
easy place to get your energy behind. However, you still want to start practicing, okay, the the money, me being taken care of, me being supported is from this divine source that I interact with. That's where all of this ultimately comes from. Now, if I'm being led to a job or I'm being led to sell some art pieces that I've created or I'm being led to start a business or whatever the next move is for you, that is infinitely variable. For me, this is the piece that has allowed me to infinitely grow and not be bogged down and not complicate money. I can guarantee you, any any one of you who is listening to this right now, who is feeling really mm, negatively about money, fearful about money, um, confused by money, you're complicating it. You're complicating it and you're layering on too many human dimensions, too much of the 3D stuff, you're tacking onto it. And that's actually what's just bogging you down completely. So when you allow yourself to abandon the clutter and opt for an energetic relationship with money, infinite possibilities open up. So growth beyond comprehension is what becomes available when you ditch the human clutter. So like I mentioned before, it makes no sense in human terms why I bombed pretty much every launch of 2021, yet I made more money than I ever had before. That doesn't logically add up for most people. However, when you're looking at the only thing that I really cared about and the only place that I really rested my trust and my belief and my knowing was God provides, Sky Daddy delivers. This is just an energetic game. The one thing that this really requires from you in order to tap into this, okay, so tapping into the infinite energy of money or the God level of support when it comes to money is practice, diligence, repetition, continuing to commit to this perspective again and again and again because you need everything within you to be on board with it. So in part, this can come from data later on. So at this point for me, I can actually use positive data that I have under my belt to kind of amplify my knowing. So that's why it moves faster and faster because if I've done something once, it makes it a lot easier for me to get my energy behind it that it's possible and even likely that I'm going to do it again. So for example, between December and January, so December of 2021 and January of 2022, I hit my record income for 2021 in December I doubled it in January. That's nuts that I I doubled my record month and all of the money came through in like a week. That in terms of time, it makes no sense. In terms of scale, it makes no sense. Because of my launch that I was in the middle of was not going well at all. There was all sorts of stuff. There was so much stuff that was going sideways, yet the money, my my momentum, my concrete focus on money is so crisp and so clear that I still had more than enough room for the goods, for the financial goods to drop in. So this is the other piece that I that I want to give you. You do not need to be a robot, an emotionless robot, in order for this to work. But giving yourself the opportunity to detangle money and start isolating it and seeing it as coming from one source will help you. It'll help you to ease up on everything else. And then you still get to keep your eye on the prize. You get to keep your eye on all of your financial goals. You get to 
focus on all of the things that you want and the shiny things that you want to buy and the places that you want to go and the kind of house that you want to live in, all of that opens up and becomes much more palatable when you take the humanness out of the money stuff. So remember, the big takeaway from this is that logistics are going to poison your financial game. So the best thing that I can recommend is take the logistics out and start looking at money as coming from God and see what happens. And the more you practice that, the better off you are going to feel and the better off you're going to be. It's not going to feel so threatening if you're able to get yourself there. And over time with enough repetition, financial stuff actually isn't scary anymore. So things like big bills or big financial moves that you want to make or big purchases or anything of the sort, it really reduces the intensity of it all and you start to open up to none of this is really that big of a deal. This is absolutely possible for me. It's not going to, you know, strike you with the fear of God. That's not going to happen when you really get into this practice. So that is my hope for each and every one of you. And the last piece of this that I want to mention, and this is something that used to really freak me out back in the day, was if I was in a bad mood or I was navigating some emotions, I was always worried that it was going to negatively impact my finances. But now, as I've isolated money and I just treat it like its own thing, it actually gives me more grace to navigate emotions, do my thing, ride the waves of life. So I just wanted to remind you that this isn't, this doesn't mean that you can't have negative feelings. Of course you can. You, However, you want your beliefs, the repeated default thoughts to be more in line with money coming from God in order to really allow it to to hold steady in whatever storm you get caught up in, whether it be circumstantial or emotional, whatever the case may be, you just want to have that concrete, that steady anchor around your finances. And so for those of you who are in Money Magic, you know the deal with mental mold. The whole point of mental mold is to develop that steadiness within yourself. So that is that is key. Repetition is key. Practice is key. Staying on top of it is key. That's crucial to you developing a better and better relationship with money. That way, your baseline is actually what improves, right? I have no interest in just getting you to manifest a single lump sum of money. That's boring. What we want is foundational steadiness and the ability to grow and the the freedom to dream and the pleasure to expand into money. We want all of these different dimensions to start growing with you and expanding with you. It's not just about the moment that the cash drops in. It's about your entire holistic experience and relationship with money so that you're not calling in a lump sum and then freaking out about spending it all or nailing a client and then feeling desperate about getting more money from them or anything like that. There's so much funk that can get tangled up around money, what you actually want to do is make sure that you're shifting the baseline default automatic response that you're having to the things that you have happening around you, to the things that you're experiencing. And when you get that piece, then you can really start playing, in my opinion, with more of the high level, more of the sophisticated relational dynamics with money. But it's very hard to achieve that when you're stuck in feast or famine or when you have kind of a nasty mental pattern happening around money. But the one thing that I can promise you is that money gets to be fun. It gets to get better and better and better and there gets to be a lot more growth and there gets to be expansion and you get to have a good time with this. You just want to make sure that the financial principles, the foundational pieces that you're working with 
feel sustainable over time and it's something that you can grow into and expand into and modify as necessary, but you want that foundation to just feel rock solid. And this is why I want to give the money comes from God piece to you because for me, that's a core principle. That's a core belief that I have. That's a, that's a key thing that allows me to continue financially growing and there not be any limits or resistance to me allowing more money because it doesn't have to do with anything else. It is nothing but me and God. That's it. So if you can get yourself there, it will change the money game for you. So that is all for this episode. I hope if you feel the call to jump into Money Magic that you do so. I would love to see you tomorrow in the live class. But if not, I definitely want to remind you the price will be going up on April 1st. So jump in while you can. It'll still be open, but if you want to take advantage of this price, definitely jump in. And of course, you get everything that came out before this. I cannot wait to see you inside. And just one more thing that I want to mention, coming in April, I have Apex coming again in May. So the applications for Apex are going to be opening back up this coming month. So stay tuned for that if you were interested in taking that before. And there is a new masterclass that is coming this month. I have not Uh, revealed the branding yet, but that is also coming soon. And I cannot wait to deliver all of this to you. So I'm super stoked. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.